Dear students of 11th class, today in your botany we are going to further move ahead with our previous topic that is the means of transport. The plants having the different means of transport as different materials needs to be transported from the different positions. You must be knowing that the roots absorb minerals and water that needs to be transported or carried over to and the tall trees up to the tips of the tall trees up to all the leaves so as to carry the process of photosynthesis besides they carry the minerals in the dissolved form along with the water and likewise the the photosynthetes which are produced in the leaves needs to be carried to every cell of the plant even to the root tips and this that is why there are the different means of transport in the plant systems and these are categorized differently and have different theories have been propounded which we are going to look upon in the classes coming ahead and today we are going to take up the passive and the active transport and the proteins from form channels in the membrane for molecules to pass through the proteins form channels in the membrane it is the plasma membrane basically through which the proteins form the channels for molecules to pass through some channels are always open others can be controlled and some are large allowing a variety of the molecules to cross and now the proteins these porines are the proteins that form large or huge pores in the outer membranes of the plastids, mitochondria and some bacteria. That means the subcellular organelles like the plastids, chloroplasts and the mitochondria wherein there are mm, located the porines which form the large pore, huge pores in their membranes allowing molecules up to the size of small proteins to pass through an extracellular molecule bound to the transport protein the transport protein when uh, uh, rotates then uh, rotates and uh, releases the molecule inside the cell extracellular molecule bound to transport protein this transport protein is then rotate the transport protein is then rotates and it release, release the molecule inside the cell for example water channels made up of eight different types of aquaporins and some carrier or transport proteins allow diffusion only if two types of molecules move together in symport both molecules cross the membrane in the same direction here is the symport for you. These are the two molecules A and B which cross the membrane in the same direction. And in antipode, in an antipode, there are they move in opposite directions. In antipode, the molecules move in opposite direction. And also in the unipode. When a molecule moves across a membrane independent of the other molecule, the process is called unipode. That means a single molecule carried or singly through the carrier protein and it is called as unipode. And now the active transport. Active transport uses energy and this is important here. To remember that active transport uses energy to pump molecules against the concentration gradient. This you need to understand. Here active transport, it uses energy to pump molecules against a concentration gradient. Active transport is carried out by the membrane proteins. That means against a concentration gradient means that from the low concentration to a high concentration that is against the concentration gradient and that is why energy is required here
to pump molecules. The active transport is carried out by membrane proteins. Therefore, different proteins in the membrane play a major role in both active as well as passive transport. Pumps are proteins that use energy to carry substances across the cell membrane. Pumps, again, are the proteins that use energy to carry substances across the cell membrane. And these pumps can transport substances from a low concentration to a high concentration. This is called as the uphill transport, as already mentioned, against the concentration gradient. That is why it's called as uphill transport. And transport rate reaches maximum when all the protein transporters are being used or are saturated. Like enzymes, the carrier protein is very specific in what it carries across the membrane. These proteins are sensitive to inhibitors that react with the protein side chains. And proteins in the membranes are responsible for facilitated diffusion and active transport and hence show common characteristics of being highly selective. They are liable to saturate, respond to inhibitors and are under hormonal regulation. That means it is a very complicated and tough mechanism. Proteins in the membranes are responsible for facilitated diffusion and active transport and hence show common characteristics of being highly selective. They are liable to saturate, respond to inhibitors and are under hormonal regulation. Diffusion whether facilitated or not take place only along a gradient and do not use energy. This is a common simplest of the diffusions that take place that take place that does not require any sort of energy and thanks have a nice day and we will further take on the plant water relations in the next class inshallah